Hi, thanks for watching the video, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Todd Beginski. In this video, I'm going to show you an exciting new feature in SharePoint Online. It's dynamic list filtering, or what we used to call connected web parts. Essentially, it allows you to put two web parts on the page, and when you select something in one web part, you can use it to filter the data that appears in the other web part. So let's get started now, and I'll show you how to implement this cool new functionality. Okay, so before I dig in and show you how to put it together, and you don't have to write any code to do it, which is great, I'm actually going to show you how it works. So what I've created here is a web page called the Store Dashboard in SharePoint Online. And if I pop this page in edit mode, you can see it's really simple. It has a web part right here that is connected to my stores list. And it has another web part right here that is a document library web part connected to my document library that holds permits. I'll republish this and we can watch it work now. So as I, collect, as I select a store on the left, it's going to use that dynamic list filtering to filter down the list of permits associated with that store. So watch, I'll pick Cincinnati, and there we go, we have the Cincinnati building permit. If I clear the filter, we get them all back. If I pick Seattle, now I can see Seattle's building permit. What if I pick two, Cincinnati plus Seattle? There we go. As you can see in the breadcrumb, is constantly updated with dynamic list filtering here for, for the title of what are you are filtering on within this list. And so as we can see, when I pick two items, two filter values appear and two items appear in the list, exactly how I suspect it should work. So let's see under the hood what the schemas of these lists look like, and then I'll show you how you connect them together. So let's take a look at the stores list now. It's very simple, isn't it? Check it out, I just have one column and its title, and it holds the name of my stores. I could use many more metadata columns if I wanted here to describe the store, put addresses, lat lawns, who the manager is, etc. But for this simple example, all we need is one column, the title. Next, we have our permits. Here is the document library where I uploaded the permits you saw on the previous page. Notice I have a column here called store, and you can see these are hyperlinks that are actually pointing to the list items back here in the stores list. So here's the Atlanta list item, for example. I clicked on it. So how did we get this column in here? Well, that's pretty simple. I went up here, picked library settings, and inside of there, I defined a new lookup column, and I named it store. If I click on it, you can see where it looks up from. It says that this is a lookup column, it gets its information from the stores list, and it pulls back the title column. That's it. That's all you have to do to create that lookup column. After you have your lookup column in place, then you can edit the data and associate each item in the document library here with a store by using that lookup column. After you've done that, then you come back to the page where you would like to connect both of these web parts. I'm going to take off the filters there and put this back in its state where nothing is filtered. Now I'll pop it in edit mode. So as we look at this web part, this is our stores web part. How did I add this web part here? I clicked add. I've come down and I find the list web part right here. And after you pick the list web part, you pick which list you want to tie it to. In this case, there's only one that I can choose from because there's only one custom list made in this site. I pick stores and there you go. So that's how I added that one to the page. To add the permits, I did the same thing essentially. I went into here, but instead of the list web part, I picked the document library web part. Now it's important to note, you can actually connect document library web parts together or list web parts together, but I chose to use the example of one of each. So here is my document library, 
And for this one, this is the permits I added, right? So after I add the document library to it, I just select permits and now it's on the page. Piece of cake. So after you've got your two web parts on the page, next thing you do is you set up the dynamic list formatting for them. It's very easy to do. First, I select the web part that I wish to apply the dynamic list formatting to. In this case, it's the permits web part we see here. Then I pop in an edit mode by clicking the little pencil icon. When you come into the web part the first time, dynamic filtering here will be turned off like this. All you need to do to turn this on is to click this little toggle to turn it on. Then you pick which column you want to filter on. Well, I'm going to filter on that store column. That was the lookup column that I made in the list that points back to the stores list. Then you pick which list or library contains the filter value. Well, as I know, that comes from the stores list. And then finally, which column does that come from? I know it comes from the title column because the title column in the stores list, as I can see right here, is the name of the store. After I've done that, I click apply. Once you've applied that, dynamic list filtering is set up and you can publish your page. And now when you click one, it'll filter down to the items you want. Very simple, isn't it? Let me show you from scratch now the process to add the lookup column to another list, snap on another list onto this page, and then apply filtering to two lists at the same time. Okay, so if this is a true dashboard, I'm going to be able to see more than just permits associated with stores. Perhaps I'd also like to see something related to the different licenses that those stores need to have to operate. I've created a new list here. It's actually a document library. It's called licenses. And as you can see, just a few minutes ago, I uploaded several documents here for example's sake. All I have though in this list is a bunch of documents. I don't have them tied to the store at any point. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go up to the settings and open up library settings for this list. Notice again, I don't have any indication of how to filter these by store, so I'm going to create a column. I'm going to call that column name store, and I'm going to make it a lookup. Once the page refreshes, it gives me an opportunity to say, where am I looking this up from? I'm pulling from the stores list, and the title column, as I know, is the one, and as you know too, is the one that stores the name of our store. So I'll select that. I can add it to the default view if I want or not. I'll choose to add it to the default view this time so you can see how that's different than the one I did not add to the default view for the other document library I filtered. So when I'm done doing that, I just click OK. Now I have a lookup column named store that's a part of this list. Let's go back to the list now and pop it in quick edit mode here. And now I'm just going to select a different store for each one of these documents. This is that association that's going to allow me to filter them. So now you can see these licenses are actually tied to individual stores. And there's my data and my lookup column. Looks just like how we had it back in the permits here, doesn't it? Now that I've got that set up, let's go back to the dashboard page. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the web part for licenses to this page such that when I click the store in the stores web part, it also filters the licenses. So let's pop the page into edit mode here. I am going to go and add a new section below here. And in that section, I'm going to add in that document library. And this is the one I had for the licenses. So I'll select the license. Now, here's the difference I wanted to show you. In the permits document library, notice we do not see the column for the store here. That's because I did not add it to the default view. The default view is the all documents view, which you can see right here. 
So if you wanted to make a different view and add it or not, that flexibility is still yours on how these, these web parts have worked all along. So now, if I republish the page here and I select a store, we can see that the filtering is applied to this web part on the right, but not at the bottom yet. So let's make it so that that filtering is applied to both web parts. So back to edit mode we go. Then we come down to the web part we wish to filter, put it in edit mode, turn on dynamic filtering, pick which column we want to license, uh, we wish to uh, filter the licenses by, and that's the store. Where does that come from? Well, that comes from the stores document library. And which column? Well, we know we store the name of the store in the title, so we'll click apply here. Now that we've got that done, we can close that and republish the page. All right, so now I can pick a new store like St. Louis here, for example, and we can see that not only are we filtering the licenses now at the bottom, but we're still filtering the permits here. Perhaps it doesn't make a lot of sense because we have to scroll up and down to see it. So there's ways you can solve these things very easily in SharePoint too. We could turn this into a three column row like this right here. And then what we can do is we can go grab the license, this licenses document library, move it up here and republish it. And now we can see at a glance just the permits and the licenses associated with any individual or multiple stores we select. As usual, you can apply list column and row formatting to all these to make them look however you like and really build yourself some very compelling solutions inside of Office 365 without writing any code with this approach. Thanks for watching. I hope that video was helpful for you as you build out cool things inside of Office 365 and SharePoint. Would you like to work together sometime? I work with folks I meet from these YouTube videos all the time. If you need help with something, hit me up at canvas.com or reach out to me on my blog. Thanks for watching and have a good day.